or the winner of this match is going to move on to our grand finals. This is a single elimination bracket. The loser is heading home. Without a doubt. We're taking a look again at both these teams. If you're watching before, I mean, AxQ was playing crazy, crazy good to help Onyx Rise get to this matchup here. And you want to highlight a player from Fennel. It's really tough to ignore the presence of Tone because they have been playing everything. One of the nastiest Sableye games I've ever seen. Slowbro game taking over. We saw them on the Charizard as well. This player is all over the map in all different roles. And no matter which Pokemon they're picking up, it is raw destruction. Yeah. I think one of the most impressive things about Fennel is they just have so many tools in their toolbox. It feels like they have so many different strategies they can throw at you, so many things that they are prepared for, and it does just feel like they are on another level right now. They're undefeated. I think they've yes. gone completely undefeated throughout this tournament, not dropping a single map. I'll have to have someone check that. Someone check that, actually, uh, but yeah. I'm pretty positive they have not dropped a single map. Uh, yeah, production, feel free to look into that, put it on screen, and prove Spragles correct for the first time in his casting would be career. Huge if I was right for once. I would We're love Right that. at Worlds, perfect. Head into our draft here. Fennel, your purple team. Onik Rise drafting for your orange team. First ban is going over to that Mimikyu. Blaziken on the other side for Onik Rise. We'll see where they end up. Hoopa, incredibly popular ban, especially out of these Asian teams, seeing how strong the macro uh, that it facilitates, making sure that it can't even get in the mix. And look at that, taking away the Zarina that we saw Fennel use to great success earlier today. First pick heading over to Fennel. They are grabbing this Urshifu. Yes. We've seen so many different Urshifu looks throughout this tournament. Lots of teams on Dark Bear, lots of teams on Water Bear here. And it feels like no matter what you bring it in for, it is you know, causing a lot of havoc here. The picks on the other side, Onik Rise grabbing Umbreon. Feels like the tank that people are picking up, like the star defender, and Cerulege, a Pokemon that I feel like has been up and down, but some of these top teams are crushing with it. Yeah, it, it's really it's really the tale of two Pokemon here. It's like Cerulege is S tier, Cerulege is F tier, and Onik Rise is putting all their eggs in the Cerulege basket. Two pink blobs, four fennel, Blissey and Slowbro, incredibly powerful Pokemon. And now we have Gyarados on the side here of Onik. We've been seeing a lot of Gyarados. Basically, if you're not able to get your Blaziken or something like that, you're grabbing Gyarados, running it up into that top path. Final couple of picks on the side here of Fennel. We're going to see what kind of attacker they want to bring out. Hovering the Mew right now, right. and possibly also Leafeon. Nice thing about Leafeon, especially into Gyarados, if you can get up there early level four and just bully Magikarp for a long time, you could really shut down Gary. One thing I've got my eyes on is Lucapo's bear, and I can't wait to see it enter this game. Axe you hovering Pikachu at the moment. We'll see if that's where they land. We're giving them just another moment here, and we'll see if that kicks off. Yeah, we're going to see what they want to lock in here. And they do lock in okay. the Pikachu as their final pick. We've seen a few teams actually play Pika this weekend. It look, it's looked pretty good each time. Some teams playing it as more of a support Pikachu. They've right. got an EXP share on it. They have a curse item on it. Other times, you're using it in that Volt Tackle Electro Ball move set. That way, you can just set up you know, situations where Leafeon or Shifu can't fight in some of these big moments here, as we are going to be heading into our first game of our semifinals very, very soon. It's right around the corner. We've seen, again, the double uh, defender, but Umbreon support role a little bit over this weekend, and, and sometimes it's looked pretty anemic. Uh, I'm excited to see Onik Rise flip, uh, flip that narrative around a little bit because a lot of NA teams went into this well and it didn't pan out for them. Yeah, looking at this Pikachu right here, I'm thinking with choice specs and a curse item, we're most likely looking at Thunder, Thunderbolt, which could be huge. You know, you do a lot of damage at range, you have a great stun, and then you are making sure that the healing is reduced for the entire team. It's not fully support, you're playing this attack but you're also disabling your opponents at the same time as our players are now loading in. This is a very important game for both of these groups. The winner of this best of three heads to our grand finals. Obviously, I think most people would say Fennel is the favorite. Onik is going to try to prove them all wrong here today. Here we go, everybody. Our first game of the semifinals. Fennel, your purple team. Onik Rise, your orange team. Japan versus Asia Pacific West in our semifinals as we have the Leafeon running to the top path, instead deciding to give all of the central area over to this Cub Fu so they can get enough experience to get online. 
Zoe running right past two ships passing in the night here. Uh, unfortunately, Sprague is correct. Fennel is 100% win rate in this event. Congratulations. Let's go. I'm right about something. Oh, man, that's huge. I feel like I'm in the grand finals. That's a big time win. It's not a trophy, but it's certainly a mental win if I've ever seen one. Quick score there out of Dev. They're trying to make it back. Uh, Pete doing a good job smothering them down, trying to make it back to their side of the map quickly. You don't want to give up a knockout to a magic card. No, that would be huge. Huge right there. And we've seen a few teams do it today where Magikarp evolves to Gyarados before the nine minute mark. It's really difficult to deal with this. Eeyore's made it up to this top path. There's the Saru ledge looking to see if they can find some action that top path, possibly pick up a KO. And now running to the bottom path, they might run into each other. Hey guys, how you doing? We're both deciding where we're gonna go as they head towards this bottom path for the fight at these birds. I'm taking a look here. Luka Poe's gonna go for a big time engage. They are this rapid strike. Urshifu, and once they decide to go in, you know the rest of Fennel's going to follow. This is a special player on a very special Pokemon, and I'm so happy they went with Rapid Strike. We're going to see a lot of movement. Take a look at this here. Leafeon getting really aggressive, and here comes the Gyarados. Big fight happening in the top path. Gary's in a lot of trouble. Oh, Umbreon's in a lot of trouble, but it picks up a KO and has to run. A opener there, and now they're able to get some points and to at least follow that up. Lucapo's going to peel back, and it looks like you may might have to. Of course not. Nobody goes down on Fennel. Nobody, Nobody gets knocked goes. out on Fennel. They Nobody really gets don't on get knocked out on Fennel. It's banana lands. How do they do that? They're so impressive. The way they juggle some of these team fights and multiple members of their team make it out on almost no HP. It's so impressive. I think that's one of the things that's been so interesting to watch on Fennel is how good they are at moving in and out and weaving in some of these big fights. Of course. All right, Cerulej going right on top, and that's a great KO on Lukapo. They're going to need to grab that back the other way. Can they sort out Eeyore? Not quite. Yes, and who else but Tone to seal that one up? Yeah, Tone picks up a nice KO right there as we're taking a look at our bottom path. Mamo Swine having to defend here. Just a little swing up, getting the hot water as they're pushing onto this goal zone, trying to get 28 points in there. Nice icicle crash, not stopping it right there. They move in with the <laughs> Unite move to pick up the KO. And that's just clever communication. Pop your Unite move now. I'm going to start scoring my 30. We're going to get these points in while we have the opportunity. Zoe scoring back the other way, 123 to 74. The score line isn't awful. Now the Cerule Edge is all on top of Tone to see what they can do. So we're going to have to peel back, but they got P right there in support. That's a big slash that doesn't really catch Tone for much damage as they go ahead and take that amnesia and forget all about it. Yeah, it's interesting seeing P on this Leafy on and setting up, you know, huge moments from Path, not using any of that central area. Already level nine. The Unite move is back, actually, yep. as they're going to look to actually take a fight here if they can before this Regirock Rock goes down. It looks like they're chipping it up right here. The Thunder is coming in and secured by the Cerule Edge. Very well done done by Eeyore. Tone steps back up. Two players down for Fennel, and this is a great opportunity for Onik Rise. The floopy flopping Gyarados getting into the back line. Dev bullying them out, and now they've got a great opportunity to score up, to even up the scoreboard. And here we go. They decide not to break this goal zone. Instead, head into the central area here of Fennel. And this is actually, it feels like a page out of Fennel's playbook. They're moving into that central area, taking it away from them, leaving that goal zone up so their team can continue to farm experience in that bottom path. However, it looks like Fennel has sent Leafeon down there. It's going to be hard to outsecure a Leafeon. Yeah, and meanwhile... And it's gone immediately. And it's gone. I was right at one point, remember? At one point, Lukapo going to grab that Reggie Alecki and break a goal zone up top. So they're still holding on to that score lead. Axe 2 going to peel back for a moment. Zoe getting popped, and Lukapo kind of goes in and says, use your wish. We're going to throw more damage at you. And now, kind of wondering what we're waiting for. It's almost like, are you going to engage on me or not? But meanwhile, the rest of the team is moving around the map to, I hope, achieve something successful. This is what I was talking about with Ana Cries. It's like he's just kind of having fun with him there. He's like, you can't really KO me. I don't have anything better to do right now. I'm going to dance in your face here for just a little bit. Nice big boosted onto the Mammo Swine, pushing them back a little bit. Ton going to have to pull back from this goal zone here. As we have no objectives on the map, this is the point when they're really trying to lick that plate clean, find all of the experience on the map, take everything they can, and possibly take a sneaky fight at one of these Tier 1 goal zones. That's another way to manipulate the game, is actually manipulating the clock in the way that uh, Zoe just did that. It's like, yeah, did they achieve anything, air quotes? No, not by a measurable metric, but they wasted a lot of time from two players on Fennel. They were just like, well, are we going to get this KO or not? Meanwhile, the rest of Onyx Rise was able to move around the map. Once again, I mean, just in their face with this <laughs> Umbreon, wasting time, frustrating them. They can't take it down. Looks like Tons oh, caught right nice. here by the Ice Fang. Big pickup right there as we have the objective spawning in the bottom path. Reggie Steele has hit the map.
Machio moving forward. We got Gary going straight towards Registeel to see if they can bait anybody in. I'm watching for Luca Poe. This is a great time for them to have a pop off moment to get Fennel feeling good. These last couple fights have gone weird. Registeel's on the razor's edge. Nice earthquake by Aluna. Ice Fang pop up. Gyarados KO. And they're flipping the script. They're taking the bodies on Fennel. We popped a Unite move. Nice plus assist. It's right in there. We're using the Pikachu Unite. Thunderbolts all from the skies raining down on the heads of Fennel. KO streak of two for the Gary. And now Onik Rise is saying Fennel who? Onik Rise looking incredible in these fights. Perfectly orchestrated right there, taking that objective. All the meanwhile, Fennel was scoring points. We have the Leafeon moving around the map. It is level 12 right now, so it's keeping pace. We have the level 11 also on the side of Fennel. So they're not too far behind, and they are up on the scoreboard. But man, these fights are looking good for Onik. They are doing a great job. Did you see that Registeel bait? And then there's a big Earthquake engage. And the immediate Gyarados stops hitting Registeel, goes in, catches the body. The Unite moves are flying. And despite an amazing Bliss assistance on Lucapo, they still take the raw deal of that bargain. Onik Rise up in another team fight. Beautiful stuff here uh, from Fennel taking the objective. But all the while that was happening, Onik Rise was able to score in the bottom path, getting that score lead shrunken quite a bit. 204 now to 180. Very, very close. When you're, you know, less than 50 points between these two teams, anything can happen. Nice big oh. slow beam worth the 3 minute 15 second mark. So they're actually looking for a fight on this tier two. I think they're going to get pushed back, but Fennel is still pushing. They're still going for it. They want that action. They want the smoke. Another Whoa. version for Unite. KO Shrika 2 for Leafeon. What kind of leaf he on? Those KOs are getting high. Now the Reggie Alecki has hit this goal zone, and the score line's going up too. That's one of your best. That's one of your best, 337 to 180, tier one broken as we have Onik now on the back foot. Huge fight there from Fennel, but they used a lot of Unite moves. You can see the entire side has no lights lit up. It's Halloween, they're not giving out any candy. They need to recharge those Unite moves from Rayquaza here in 35 seconds. Another Whoa. objective in the bottom Yo. path here, Yo. 15 seconds until it drops. Onyx in a weird spot <laughs> because they have a ton of experience on their side, their Unite moves should be good to go, but they're way behind on score. I think they're really going to want this objective so that they can take a big fight at Ray. There's not a lot of time on the clock. They're rushing to it now. It took 60 seconds for Fennel to absolutely flip Onik Rise's strategy on its head, and now they're way up on experience, on points, and we have a Ray around the corner, and now Onik Rise needs to do something with it. They recognize that there's no way they can rip this in time and get good positioning here at Ray. Onik moving into the Rayquaza pit, looking to see if they can find a fight. No one caught there with that Earthquake. Leafeon moves in, the Ice Fang misses. We have the Boosteds, we have the Ooh. Hot Water, we have the Solar Beam into another Boosted, into a Razor Leaf. The Mammo Swine's in trouble, but they are peeling back. Another Skull, oh. and it looks like they're moving in! Def goes in, but they're getting collapsed on popping the Umbreon Unite. Zoe's going to try and get out, but on the top side, it's a Luna lone HP. Ice Fang up on Lucapo. They get the KO off the Pikachu Unite move. Now, all of a sudden, Dev has to peel back. They still have everybody standing, but everybody's so low HP, they can't leverage the sick catch on Lucapo. Beautiful catch right there, but they all need to reset, and this Umbreon's in a lot of trouble, oh, and that's no. devastating there for Onik. They've lost one of their defenders as they're moving into this Ray Pit. They are down a minute 15 on the clock. The Hot Water finding him in the tall grass, and Onik is in hot water right now. They need to make a play. They need to get Ray. They're too far behind. Even a full pocket score won't do it. Moving on to Ray Quaza now, and they're it's ripping it. full rip. Slow beam on Gyarados. Who's going to secure this thing? It's getting low. We've got the Bliss into the middle. It's the Bliss! With the egg bomb, you may getting it done. P going to score. Four players down for Onik Rise, and Onik Rise is finding themselves falling fast. Onik Rise not in control of that fight. A beautiful secure there from the Blissey. And Fennel is taking game one in commanding fashion. Controlling the score, yes. controlling the Ray Pit, controlling the fight. And then when they moved in to try to do the last thing they could, secure Rayquaza, they took that from them as well. Fennel going to be up one game here in our semifinals. All I'm focused on right now is from three minutes and 30 seconds to two minutes and 30 seconds. The 60 seconds that Fennel needed to absolutely get back in the game and like shatter the doors off of it too. Not only were they behind, all of a sudden they're ahead by 200, they're ahead by three levels. How the heck did that happen? Onik Rise is looking at all the sand falling between their fingers going, how did we let that go? Onik Rise played an amazing game, but you're right. There was a switch that was turned on. 
Fennel, when they took that fight with that Reggie Alecki in the top half, they changed the game for themselves. They put themselves oh, in man. control. They looked amazing in that Ray Quaza fight, and there just was not a lot that Onik Rise could do. There is nothing that seems harder in this game than a full five-on-five five tier two siege when you're trying to push in a Reggie Alecki, and they made that look like child's play. Well, they took huge risks, right? You they were to. using Unite moves, they were fight they were moving hard. They wanted to get their advantage there, and they absolutely got it. Picking up massive KOs, yep. breaking the goal zone, giving them the score lead, and then yep. at the same time, they had enough time to run back, start getting their Unite moves back for this next fight. Just a really amazingly played match there by Fennel as we're heading into our next draft here, the bands, Mimikyu, Serena band out. Now we're gonna get our next band here from Fennel. They will be our team with our first pick. A lot of teams lately opting to take that second pick. You get two powerful picks in a row. Yep. You can almost counter whatever your opponent's gonna throw at you. In fact, sometimes you want them to pick something that you're kind of, you know they're excited sure. about, but you want to run it. Yeah, the problem for Onik Rise right now is the best counter to Fennel is like disconnecting their switches. <laughs> and huge counter. That is a gargantuan counter to Fennel. They just haven't looked like they've had any weaknesses all weekend long, and the trend continues. Even when you think you have a leg up, they are right there to snatch you back down and make you realize that Fennel's here to gain. Onik Rise now with two picks. Umbreon in that first slot. Umbreon's been getting first picked in so many matches here today. We're gonna take two powerful all-rounders. Nope, switching up. Nope, still two, two powerful, powerful all-rounders. All All right, there we go. We've got Ledge and we have Gyarados. Now on the side of Fennel, they're looking to see what they're gonna lock in for these next two picks. Possibly bringing out Charizard. We've seen ton on Charizard today. Yep. It looked pretty fantastic. Next pick, hovering the Eldegoss. Eldegoss is the support that always provides massive value, as you can see what they're playing for right there. The those, world champion trophies. Those trophies are gorgeous, and you definitely want the one where Pikachu's holding the gold. Oh, yeah. You without want the a one doubt. where Pikachu's holding the gold. I tried to touch him earlier. They said, you just make him dirty. Yeah, it's I thought it was mean. We I are just filthy no people. One touch but you don't wash your hands. It's disgusting. Oh, come on. He Germs does wash real. his hands. Germs aren't real. I won't get into it. They told me not to get into it. Mamo Swine being locked in. Pikachu once again being locked in. I thought that Pikachu looked fantastic, actually. I thought it had so many big moments in that game, so I'm not surprised yep. they're bringing it back out here. Next two picks over to the side of Fennel. They did decide to move off of that charge. Charizard instead grabbing their Shifu for Luka Po there. And finally, we're going to see what they want to fill in these last two slots. Tone hovering the Cramorant, and a Mew is locked in. Uh, Mashio Mew last game looked great. It was just solar beam harassment, electro balls, and it was facilitating great engagements. Tone actually switching off the Cram to a Lucario, a Pokemon that you and I haven't been particularly big fans of all weekend long. But uh, if there's one player that can make us eat those words, it's certainly Tone. Yeah, Fennel is the kind of team that I feel like anything they're throwing at me, I'll go, yes, OK, Fennel, you're exactly right. On the other side, Onik, I actually kind of love the counter pick here with Clefable. We haven't seen a ton of Clefable this weekend, but boy, Urshifu and Lucario do not like gravity. And if we're seeing a gravity Clefable right here, I mean, they make their day miserable in some of these big fights. Yeah, there's a way to work around gravity, right? Go in, force the gravity out, wait a second, and then re-engage afterwards while it's on cooldown. However, even just having the opposing team having to play around gravity is another hindrance that exists because it's not allowing them to operate in a manner that makes that's the most efficient. Yeah, absolutely, as we have our teams Ready for this next match. We've got the Rescue Hood on that Clefable. We've got the Special Attack Specs looking to stack as much as they can. Get those big time healing numbers. Once again, Pikachu with that Curse item to lower the healing of their opponents. And we see that EXP share on Mew. This is gonna be a support Mew. Yeah, and it's something that was uh, played earlier. You and I didn't get to cast it, but I'm excited to get the opportunity now. Yeah, it's gonna be cool to see here. Fennel up one game right now. One game away from the Grand Finals. Onik down one game. They need to win two in a row to keep their tournament alive and head to these Grand Finals. Onik last year in groups, knocked out. This year, possibly heading to a Grand Finals as we head to game number two. Fennel, your purple team. Onik Rise, your orange team. Everything is on the line for Onik right now.
Tone leashing that Indeedy over to see if they can catch somebody. Not quite yet. Dev going to move forward. We want to see an early Gyarados for Onyx Rise so they can start putting pressure on this aggro Umbreon. Yeah, and we have this Fable just stealing some berries here, looking to stack as much as they can, but not making a lot happen. Umbreon moving over to the side of this Magikarp, able to steal away some of that experience here. Again, if you can, you really want to try to shut down this Magikarp early. Yep. So many teams have let it get online so fast. Yeah, I mean, already going to be level 5 here in short order is P, but in combination with a Gossifler, just the A-press monster is great. Electroweb, one of the best moves in the game. Is it going to be enough? The way they just covered for the Mashio comes Coming through boosted out a long range. K opener is on a Saru ledge by who else? Who else? Yeah, beautiful stuff here from Fennel. That was a pretty fight, too. He had the bitter it blade was. charged up for the Mew, coaching right into their allies to pull away from it there. Nice big boost that they're pushing onto this goal zone, reigning in some points, which they're able to easily do. Get themselves a score lead 47 to 7 in control in the bottom path. <laughs> Tone actually outscaling Lucapo here. Uh, they're both on the verge of level six. Lucapo will tick over, uh, but just Tone, impactful player over and over and over again. Okay, we got a pretty decently timed Gary here. Gonna have to jump back, grab a berry. So at least the push stops for now. Four players for Fennel. Actually, Lucapo peeling away. Let's see what they're gonna do. Yeah, and here we go, just throwing some boosteds at them here, peeling back from this goal zone. There's a lot of experience to deal with on the map. Urshifu running back to that central area. Saru Ledge on the other side, as we have some spawns here in the middle. The birds are about to jump into this middle area here, and I didn't see which kind of Lucario we got. What do we got? Is this extreme speed? Is this power-up punch? What are you playing, Tom? That's a great question. That is a great question. We're moving back through all of that experience. Went to Fennel really quick. Eeyore caught out, and they are going to get buckled by Lucapo. And now Axe, you find themselves like, wow, there's four players here? What's going on? Aluna going to have to peel back, grab a berry, but Tone is right there with them. Electro Ball popped up. Ice Fang reposition. Is that still the Electro Web? I mean, we are struggling out here. Beautiful stuff here on the side of Fennel, breaking that goal zone. Nice overcap there. Not massive, but also the positional advantage at this next bottom. Reggie is going to be huge. We did get to see its power up punch close combat. We're going to see if they have more luck with it than some of the teams we've seen throughout this tournament. So far, so good. The level lead is pretty incredible for every Pokemon on the side of Fennel. Beat down almost an entire level on uh, Dev over there, on the Gyarados, but still hanging in there, hanging tough. Umbreon has great sustain, and the way that they're playing this aggro Umbreon is going to be able to scrap pretty well on its own. Yeah, and now down in the bottom path here, we have Urshifu starting this Reg Ice. Multiple members of Onic Rise moving down for this fight. Huge catch right there with the Ice Fang. Tone's in a lot of trouble. Tone goes down. Unite move is not able to come out, and they have to peel away from this Reg Ice. It looks like they just got it ready for Onic Rise. Thank you very much. We'll take that. Uh, beautiful, beautiful engagement there. Great follow-up. And shout out to Lucapo for not overextending their welcome. They just get out of there and like, look, I'm not going to get knocked out to on a vain attempt on this. There's four players there. Yeah, they recognize very intelligently it just was not going to work out for them. Lucario already got caught. Let's peel back. Let's not give up more, right? The worst thing you can do is throw good money after bad. At least that's what everyone keeps telling me. Fight breaking out. Umbreon Unite moving in. And they're going straight for them. Umbreon pops their Unite, but they're going to have to just go on the chase down because because they're looking at Zoe, who is intelligently enough making sure that nobody else on their team is really getting sieged on. But they are able to get the Clefable on the other side and the Pilliswine, so at least P came back with some sort of prize on that chase. Yeah, they picked up some KOs there, but you're right. That's what some of these you know, top teams are able to do. If they're going to give up a KO, it's going to be on their lowest level supporter running the EXP share, not their level 10 Ooh, nice. you know, Saru Ledge already. Oh, wow, oh, looked oh. like they were going to be able to secure it right there, not able to make it happen happen as this Reggie Alecki is walking towards the side of Onik. Giving them a real opportunity on Onik Rise was Dev with a nice little bounce into the action. Tone moving forward, charging up, engage on Dev quickly. Pikachu Unite move is great. We're going with the follow-up or cannon right through everybody. Repositioned by P on the foul play and now two players are down for Onik Rise. Tone is down on the other side but that Reggie Alecki already hit which means the work's done. Yeah, beautiful stuff there with the Gyarados Unite move coming out. Obviously, they were looking to pick up a big KO, but at the same time, Reggie Alecki can't see you when you're underwater, walks right into the goal zone, lets them have a huge score there. Fennel in control of this game. Level-wise, point-wise, everything is looking great for them. Finally, we have a Mamoswine on the side of Onic Rise, all evolved up and ready to go. I mean, Mashio's 
ability to use coaching with this Mew has been a yes. wonder to watch. They are just in and out, tracking back, never giving themselves up as a potential target for Onikrise to capitalize on, but always there to support the squad. I kind of like this support Mew. Beautiful stuff there, taking down this Umbreon in the fight. We have Cerulej now peeling towards this top path, looking to see if they can score. And Gyarados is going to try to cut Lucario and Mew off at the pass. Cerulej looking to put some points in, and they do. 32 points ran into the goal zone, and they are now going to peel away. Nice use of the Phantom Force to make sure they don't get hit there, but Tone chases. Go straight, another Pikachu Unite right there to put the pressure on. I think I saw the Cerulej Unite come out as well. Two Unites just to get Tone off the map, and they aren't even able to get points on the follow-up. They're already peeling back to their side. Meanwhile, we have Fennel taking this bottom objective here, ripping apart Reggie Rock, and there's really nothing Onik Rise can do about it. They have one, <laughs> of course, okay. the Caster Curse. Yeah, there's something they can do about it. Clefable can apparently steal it. Yeah, and it looks like the Clefable might make it out of dodge as well. So a true double check mark win. Unlike you being correct just that one time, they were right twice. Yeah, but I'm going to remember that forever. As we head to the top path here, we have an objective spawning here, and Fennel is ready to go. Reggie Alecki is on the board. They have a good shot to take it here, but now take a look at this. Onik rises on the march. All five members making it to the top path. They're looking for an engagement here. We've got a little bit of scrap downstairs. Okay, we're going to crash land on P to top them off. Yume is, and now we're all sitting on top of each other, realizing that everybody's shown up. Meanwhile, Tone is just moving forward, trying to see what they can do. Is there an engagement opportunity? No. P was playing in the front line there. Cerulej actually backs off this Reggie Alecki. Is this fight going to materialize, or are we just middle school dancing out here, sitting on the opposite sides of the gym? It looks like we're going to take a deep breath and follow for an engagement in a few. Yeah, we're going to see how these players want to engage right here. Obviously, it's hard for Fennel to jump in and fight near this gravity, and it's difficult for Onik Rise. They have no goal zone. They don't have a good positional advantage. They're just moving back and forth, back and forth. There's so much experience on the map. There's so much that could be done, and Fennel notices it. Mew running to the bottom path to score here. Onik sees that. They move towards Reggie Alecki. Reggie Alecki's at half. I mean, Onik Rise is definitely going to have to take this. Tone not even willing to engage. They're just going to sit on pad to see if they want to defend. If it hits, they have a great opportunity for an overcap. Aluna going straight for Tone, actually, and they're going to let it walk. Beautiful stuff there, bringing them 152 to 251. A full pocket score when we have double time here in 20 seconds will put them up by one point. Onik Rise's tournament life is on the line right now. The last hope for Indonesia, the last hope for APAC West. They have to somehow take down Fennel. Clefable has not found its moments, has not found the gravity to get them stuck here. We'll find out if it can happen in this big fight. The solar beams coming through, the healing on the team as they move towards Ray. They're going straight for the rip. We're on to the backside. Gyarados, nice Unite spins up a couple. Can they leverage it? We're pushing forward here. Luka Bo pops their Unite move. They're on the chase. Dev uses that action right back. They actually have to bounce away. Nobody quite down yet. Pikachu is yet there. Rayquaza so low. Taken oh. by the Pikachu. Onik Rise remains alive. Can they get some points? It. You said one burger evens this thing up. Aluna doesn't have full pockets, but they are the one of the few with the shields. Clefable's peeling up top. Is that the burger they need to go up by one? Clefable running to the top path here. They're going to let their ally score first as Onik rises now up 372.51 here in game number two. A minute, 15 seconds left. It's definitely not over, but they still have Rayquaza shields. They are still looking to score. They're still looking to put more points on the board while they try to defend. Defend. Meanwhile, we saw the gravity in that fight. They caught them in it like Sandra Bullock, and they were able to shut them down. Huge fight for Onik Rise as they are now pushing towards this tier two goal zone. Here comes Fennel. Crash landing is dev. They're gonna have to try and stop these scores. Nice little solo bounce to make sure that P can't get their points in. We've got the just the moonlight. We've got the gravity down. They can't press this pad. P is low on HP. Luke Bo comes back in. We're bouncing backwards. Another grab put down. Crash landing on top of their heads is Pikachu with another oh. Unite move, getting two. And now Tone is standing all by their lonesome with just Yume in their back pocket, and there's not enough in the tank to get this done. KO streak of three out of this Pikachu. Give him the whole squad. Wow, look at that. Onik Rise has done the impossible. Well, not impossible for them. They finally take a match off of Fennel. Fennel can be beat, everyone, and it could happen in this next game as our semifinals are all tied up. Onik Rise handing Fennel their first loss of the weekend, their first map loss of the weekend. And you know what they say, when it's you and me, 
It's game three. That's right, my friend. Always a game three with us. You know, that's the reason no one can take down Fennel. They just needed the right casting pair to make sure that they hurt their game. We are the kryptonite of efficiency when it comes to tournaments <laughs> being run. Onyx Rise has taken down so many great teams, and they look fantastic doing it. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about a giant slayer. We're looking at one right now with Onik Rise. Let's get straight into this draft. As Onik Rise is going to ban Zarina, mimic you for Fennel, and Onik Rise is going to have the first pick this go round. Yeah, we're going to see how Fennel wants to take two picks in a row. Onik Rise, a lot of great options here. Blaziken, I feel like, would be picked up by just about any team if it was available. Mm -hmm. We have so many powerful defenders, they could steal away something like an Umbreon, but instead, they want that Cerulege back, and they're going to okay. take it here in the top slot. Yeah, really, it might be like we are pretty good on it, but we definitely don't want to deal with Fennels. We're going to see where they end up. I think the Umbreon's a great place to start. One of the best defenders going, and we're going with Gary. I like this. Gyarados, Umbreon. Umbreon, that all-rounder that everyone was like, this is really good, but I don't think anyone recognized that it was going to be one of the top all-rounders throughout this tournament. On to the other side, we're going to see the next two picks here for Ana. Covering that Pikachu, wouldn't be surprised to see it again. Maybe not so early, we're going to have to find out. Slowbro getting locked in right now. And then finally, yes, they do lock in Pikachu pretty okay. early in this draft. Yeah, I mean, there's pro there's some writing on the wall that you and I aren't reading right now, and Pikachu between these two teams has been played quite a few times, and honestly, it's really been exceeding expectations, in yes. my opinion. I think Pikachu's been doing incredible. It got some buffs a little while back. It's one of those Pokemon that has been slowly buffed over the course of this entire UCS season, and I think a lot of people just didn't give it an opportunity to shine, but Onik is. We've got Leafeon, and we've got Mew. Leafeon, interestingly enough, was a Pokemon that at the beginning of the UCS season was banned out almost every single game. Yeah, exactly. And it's kind of, it's really been a peak and a valley with this Pokemon, right? Originally with Solar Blade, and then it kind of had a research and people realized how good Razor Leaf was, and then it kind of fell off, but crawling back into the mix, and it's had some great games this weekend. Now, interesting here, the Lucario has now been picked up by Onic Rise. I haven't seen it as a huge force this weekend, really, every team that's picked it up, I feel like is often losing with it. That's probably just me noticing a few games here or there. These players obviously know what they're looking for, but I'm kind of surprised to see it here. I, I really personally don't understand the strategy behind it fully. Clefable, once again, felt like a great pick for them, and we do have Charizard as a yep. gutter pick for Fennel. Yep, and then Tone's gonna pick up that Charizard. We saw it earlier, it looked really good. Two players to watch if you want to play Charizard, Tone and Toon Slim. Something in the alliteration there must make sense on how good these players are. And it comes down to the spacing that they have when they play this character. So dial in if you're looking for a lesson. Yeah, this is going to be a really exciting match here. We've got the two all-rounders that I think a lot of people expected to be sort of the big dogs this weekend, Cerulege and Charizard. We also have two more, Lucario and Gyarados, that have been in the conversation a lot. This team on the side of Onik is interesting. They don't have a ton of front line. Nope. They've got the slow bro, and then they're going to be diving in, right, with Cerulege and Lucario. And then, of course, they got this back line. It's Pikachu. It is Clefable. It's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see how they can get away from the Charizard Unite moves. If they can, and if they can outlast them, they probably have a better team fight here than Fennel. I have a tendency to agree with you, Spraggles, but it's Fennel. So you, yeah. can't, you can't just assume that, oh, we have the a theoretical better team fight here. You have to execute. And now, for these teams, if they lose, they are out. That's right. This is it. All is on the line for these two squads. They are playing for that spot in the grand finals. The last match here of these two in the semifinals. Onik Rise, your purple team. Fennel, your orange team. It is all tied up right now. The last chance for APAC West and the last chance for Japan to make it to the grand finals. There's more on the line than that. There's tons of pride included, right? The trophy, but being able to say you are your region's first champion can't be understated. Right now, the trophies have lived in North America. No longer, Spraggles, and one of these teams wants to take it home to theirs. That's right. Lucario picking up a nice secure right there, taking it away from Fennel, who's just in their face trying to stop them. Here comes P into that central area, seeing what they can steal, looking for this red buff, and it looks like they're going to get it. 
Yeah, I mean, there's no way Eeyore could even contest that, right? The level four run across, grab a buff, and then hit top path is going to be devastating. We still have a Clefairy there, and Dev is moving back with just above half HP. And we have this Magikarp looking to get some experience, get online here, become Gyarados. We have Eeyore in this bottom path, able to now get to level five, running towards this fight, barely making it to the 850 birds, but they do make it in the bottom path. Now, here we have P ready to go. Razor Leaf pulled back through, grabbing the Swablu and Altaria. Dev, I think, actually got a couple of them, to their credit, able to skirmish there and not leave empty-handed. Dev just looking to watch Yume right here, going, yeah, we know, we know what you do as Umbreon. <laughs> we know you're coming in here. We're watching you, buddy. We're trying to make sure it doesn't happen. Clefable scoring in this top path. Still a Clefairy, but they need those stacks so their healing is able to really support them near the end of the match. Leafeon running up to the top path right here, moving back onto the Slowbro. Slowbro pulling back towards their central area. Lucapo hitting Gyarados fairly quickly, not the fastest we've seen all weekend, but certainly reasonable. Able to be an impact in that top path, which means they don't have to be babysit as much. And it looks like we're going it right after them. Nice little foul play on Zoe to reposition. Here comes Eeyore. Can they get anything done? We're going to bounce out, says Lucapo. Nice razor leaf to get the space because nobody wants to step in that green blender. They pull back from this fight. Now towards the central area, we can see P taking a lot of this here. Beautiful razor leaf gets it all over to the side of Fennel as they run down to this bottom path. That Charizard's eight, it almost has its Unite move, and once it has its Unite move online, every single fight is gonna be an issue for Onyx Rise. That is without a doubt. We are dipping out of there, says Eeyore, because the pressure is just too much. Machio peeling back, Electro Ball goes for the secure on the wild Pokemon. Aluna stepping up, we've seen them on Mamoswine Tice. Slowbro might be the difference maker here. Yeah, Slowbro pushing forward, getting some vision here, and we can see Charizard just pushing them back there, looking for this level nine. If they're able to get it right now, this fight changes dramatically. That's nine. They can now push towards this with impunity. They know if they move in, they can grab a member of the team, yep. and Onik is aware of that as well. They see them at nine, trying to push back the Umbreon right here as they get ready for this bottom objective. It looks like they're going to have to give it up. They recognize without a Unite move, there's not much they can do, and they say, hey, fair enough, we're just going to score and break your goal then. What's crazy is right there was a five versus three. All of Onik Rise was there, and there was only three players for Fennel, and that was enough just to push them away because the Charizard was so big. Yeah, they recognized having that Unite move at that bottom, Reggie, was just too much for them. Reggie, like you mean, ripped apart. Cerulej, Unite move coming in. They do get the secure but Char's in the air. And they're burning them down. Close combat comes out to get a little bit of HP back, but that is not enough. The Moonlight's not down, which means they're not getting healed. Zoe gonna have to run after, gonna try and pick up Eeyore, who has a KO streak of two, finding a way to get it done. Reggie Alecki nicely secured again by Eeyore, and they let it hit. They completely missed the stop, and now the goal zone's gone. Yes, they still have the lead, but they're finding quality KOs, and they're climbing back up. Zoe just rolled the Hyper Beam. They lock it in, and that spells disaster for Fennel as Eeyore is still going. Can Lucapo leverage a knockout here? Spraggles, they need one big. They bounce into the middle, trapped in the gravity. They find action, son, and now they're getting on the goal zone, plus 35. He coming up an absolute savior in this fight with this Leafeon that was going horribly wrong for Fennel. Nice little stack here in this top path on Clefable. Again, they don't give up a ton of experience here with this KO, and they're running right back for it. They're saying, look, I'm really trying to stack these specs up. I got to heal the squad right here. And when you're KOing a lower level Pokemon Duke Snacks, you really don't get a lot of XP. Right. The reverse, of course, is huge. Yeah, nice little Solar Beam out of Machio to get the knockout on that Lucario. I yeah. almost forgot the name of the Pokemon. Yeah, it's because we don't see it too much. <laughs> 155 to 198 right now as we're at the halfway point. And it feels like these teams are pretty even here. Fennel moving into the central area, catching the Clefable. Clefable up into the air. Leafeon seeing if they can make something happen. Clefable in a lot of trouble, and it does go down as Umbreon scores in this top pass. Trying to secure some quality targets. All right, picked up and slammed down. Straight into the slow beam. A great KO by Eeyore. Two down instantly. We saw the Pikachu Unite flash for just a moment, and they actually forced Mashio to use theirs just to get out. Electro Ball on a Luna, and now P is finding out that they're there's three players from Onyx Rise on the hunt. This Leafeon is just so aggressive towards all of the wild Pokemon on this map. They are going to get punished Woo! for it right here as Onyx Rise picks up a nice KO, but they're down 155, 214, getting ready for this objective. But there's a tier one goal zone here for Fennel, so this is a pretty safe fight for them. They can move in and out as they move towards the side of Onyx, catching Slowbro a little bit. Bitterblade coming out, seeing what they can make happen.
happen. Gyarados heads underwater. The Phantom Force was not on time, and they go down. They catch Eeyore right there. That's Gargantuan. They're going to be able to get this Registeel for free, and you can already see where that Umbreon is, just menacing them, moving forward, always pressing forward. Beautiful stuff there from Fennel. Great fight. I don't know if that Gyarados actually popped out of the water a little early to sort of make sure that they could outplay the Phantom Force that was coming from Cerulege, or if it was just simply on cooldown and they couldn't make it happen. You see a lot of plays like that with Cerulege, where they wait to the last moment, hide right there, right, and make sure that they miss a Unite. Well, it didn't happen there. They go down. Reggie Alecki now being pushed towards the side of Onik Rise. Again, they're behind on the scoreboard here. Level-wise, they're pretty close, but Fennel is all over their side of the map. Yeah, and immediately grabbing the Reggie Alecki, you may bought them so much time that they could get that clean, and now they're trying to score another huge toss and slam. The Charizard is trying to burn. Oh, we have a slow beam was used as well here, and that's a pretty late one, as now they're able to defend the goal zone, but they're fading back. Two players down quickly. Eeyore getting another KO streak of two, but they are dealt an L on the backside of it. Yeah, they stopped them from scoring, but they're going to need to recharge these Unite moves. One nice thing about Slowbro and Cerulej actually getting KO'd there for Onik Rise is that helps charge their Unite move. They do get charged once they get KO'd. The unfortunate thing is they give more experience over to the side of Fennel. Fennel with a level 14 Charizard, 13 Gyarados, 13 Leafeon, about to be 14. Almost at their max level with 45 seconds left until Rayquaza. They're going to be a force to deal with. And we're going to have to see if Dev is going to be able to make anything really happen on this Lucario. It feels like it's been mostly a non-factor in this match. I mean, Yume always getting quality vision for the team. I mean, Fennel has a clear understanding of where almost every member of Onik is right now. Pete going in, puts a Razor Leaf down to see if they can get a catch. They can't. You actually saw Yume come down for the support here. 15 seconds till Ray Spraggles, and this one matters a heck of a lot. That's right. It matters so much for these two teams. Onik Rise, Fennel, one game away from the Grand Finals. The only thing in their way is the other team. Onik Rise is down right here, but not by much. If they can catch them, they can make something happen. Umbreon in trouble, and they're going for it now! They have to use their Unite move, and Charizard picks up and slams down. They don't get in any quality action here. You may peeling back. They rip Ray the whole time! They rip Ray the whole time! Tone secures, and holy smokes, three players down in a heartbeat. You want to talk about a bait and switch? Fennel just pulled the rug out from under us. Fennel takes Rayquaza. Fennel scores in the top path, now moving towards this main goal zone here, deciding to peel away. A minute 30 left on the clock. It happened so fast, there's still time in this match. But look at this, Rayquaza shields on multiple members of Fennel right here. Mew doesn't have one, but Gyarados does. Charizard does, Leafeon does. <laughs> As Gyarados is looking to make something happen, the slow beam stops them. They're gonna get a KO, they're gonna break a Ray shield, but two members of Fennel are running towards their main goal zone, and they're gonna score more points. This is gonna make the lead almost insurmountable for Onik Rise. We've got one minute left, Spraggles, and they're gonna need a miracle on the side of Onik Rise. They've been riding this miracle all weekend long. Is there anything more in the tank? Mashio says, doubt it, son. We're putting so many points in. This thing is over 45 seconds until the rise has fallen. That's right, 409 to 869. There's just nothing that Onik Rise can do here. They would have to KO every single member of Fennel, and even then I don't know if there are enough points on the board. More members of Onik Rise do fall. Fennel takes game number three. Fennel from Japan is heading to your grand finals. You look at how good this Fennel squad is. They're acing the rest of the team as we go into the last 10 seconds. They are in the grand finals, and they've looked like the best team all weekend. It shouldn't be a surprise. Can anyone beat Fennel? So far, the answer to that is no. Onik giving them the best run for their money so far. But Fennel from Japan heading to your grand finals to prove that Japan is the best region in the world.